Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the B-Link SER4. This is a pretty powerful little mini PC that has an eight core Ryzen 4800U processor inside. It might do very well for desktop computing, but also uh, for some light gaming and even some server applications. And it came pretty well specced out as well. And we're going to be taking a look at this machine and what it can do in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from B-Link. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this computer is all about. Now, the price point on this is $749. This is definitely pricey as far as mini PCs go but the specifications here are actually pretty good. So we have the Ryzen 4800U processor inside, if it wasn't already apparent from all of the AMD branding on it. Uh, this also came with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte SSD. We took it apart a little bit earlier on a live stream and you can see how everything is configured there. It also has room for a two and a half inch SATA drive so you can expand the storage by adding a drive, but you can also upgrade the NVMe that's on board. And the RAM was configured in dual channel mode, as you can see there as well, to get the most performance out of it. Uh, what was interesting, though, is that our unit came with an Intel SSD and crucial memory, and the Amazon product listing said it had Kingston memory and storage. Either way, it's got name brand components in here, which is not something you always see from one of these mini PCs. Now, I've looked at a lot of these mini PCs from B-Link over the years, and I've always found their product quality to be very good, not only in its physical build, but also in its performance. That said, I always like to do a buy-at-your-own-risk warning on these devices because they don't have a very broad support network across the world. So if you have a problem with this, you have to get in touch with them in China, and I'm not sure how you go about getting something repaired short of sending it back there. So just keep that in mind. But... Uh, of all these mini PC brands, I found B-Link to be one of the best ones, but they still have a limited support network. The product, though, is very well built, like its other siblings out there. It is all metal, and it really is built to quite tight tolerances. In fact, we had a hard time getting the bottom panel off here for looking at the upgradability of this unit because everything fits together so tightly. That's not necessarily a bad thing because it shows that they really did build this to a high quality standard. And you've got metal throughout here, so it really feels like a solid device. You got a decent port selection on here as well. You've got two USB 3 ports here on the front. You also have a full service USB type C port. This will do data devices, but it also supports power and video output. And a little bit earlier, I was able to get 4K 60 with an HDMI dongle out of this USB-C here. So it's a full service port that you can use for everything. If you have a docking station, you could plug that into here with a single cable and get everything up and running. You also have a headphone microphone jack over here along with its power button. It's got a lot of venting on it and you'll definitely want to keep all of these areas clear for airflow. We'll talk a little bit more about fan noise in a bit when we boot it up. And you can also see another uh, air uh, output over here on the back. Uh, you also have gigabit ethernet here, a USB 2.0 port. This is where I would plug in your keyboards and mice and whatnot. Another USB 3 port here. You get two more HDMI outputs and all three of your video output options can do 60 frames per second at 4K. It doesn't support HDR, but you can get three displays going at 4K 60, two out of the back here and one out of that USB-C port. And you also have a power adapter that you can use here or use that USB-C port. My only gripe on the power connector is that it is a wall wart, as you can see here. It does about 57 watts, which is more than enough for the power consumption of the device, but the cable is very short on it. They also gave me an HDMI cable in the box here, which is even shorter. This is designed, I think, to be used with its included Visa mount if you're going to mount it on the back of your computer display. So if you are shopping for this device, you might want to buy a longer HDMI cable to go with it. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. As you can see, we've got it booted up here and it's running Windows 11. It actually comes installed with Windows 11 Pro. B-Link says you can go down to Windows 10 if you contact their support department first. There must be some license swap you can do but as you'll see later on in the video, this will also run Linux. 
Now, as you might expect, out of an eight core machine, it actually performs quite well when you're doing the basics here. We'll start off with some web browsing as a first example. I have this connected up to my Ethernet network, but it also has a Wi-Fi 6 radio on board that supports Bluetooth as well. And all in for doing basic tasks here like web browsing and word processing and Excel documents, this is going to be more than adequate and it should multitask quite well uh, for one, having all that RAM on board, but also because it is running with an eight core processor. Now what you're looking at here is a 4K 60 frames per second video running off of YouTube. And as you can see here, we did get a couple of drop frames when it first started playing, but it's been able to keep up now that that video has started. So altogether, if you're looking to do Netflix and other uh, types of streaming video off of this device, it should be able to keep up quite well, even at 4K 60 frames per second. But note that it doesn't support any of the HDR modes that we're now seeing on a lot of 4K streaming services. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 176 in Google Chrome. That puts this right in line with a bunch of other computers we've looked at running with similar Ryzen processors. Note that those other computers are laptops, and that's because the processor in this machine is the same chip you'll find in a laptop typically. The difference though, when you've got something like this in desktop form, is that the processor is not as constrained. It can get full power all the time from the wall that it's plugged into, and it also has much more room for cooling. Now on the cooling front, this does have a cooling fan, as I mentioned, and the fan noise, I think, will be quite distracting to people who are sensitive to fan noise. The fan itself isn't all that loud when it's running like this, but when the processor has any kind of load on it, the fan will ramp up and then ramp down in accordance with the amount of load that it's receiving. And that variation in fan speed, which is constant on this, especially if you've got a bunch of stuff running, is going to be, I think, very distracting for people who really prefer a quieter work environment. So if you're not a fan of fan noise, uh, this is something you might want to think twice about. I also tried some video editing on the machine here. We're gonna load up DaVinci Resolve where we've got a 4K 60 frames per second project loaded up. And as you can see here, even a pretty robust application like DaVinci Resolve loads up very quickly on this little mini PC. But where you're going to see some hiccups is the fact that this doesn't have a discrete GPU for video processing. So in this case, we've got uh, a video of producer Jake's cat, and this is shot at 4K 60, and you'll see that it will jump around a little bit. When you have transitions like this, it will lag when you're trying to do a real-time preview of what that transition might look like. So if we had a computer with a GPU, this would be a lot smoother here and we did optimize the video prior to running this test. And this is an area where mini PCs might fall a little bit short. If you're editing 1080p video and not doing a lot of fancy rendering, this is gonna be fine. But I think if you are really doing a lot with filters and adjustments in color and whatnot, you're gonna want something more powerful than a mini PC like this to do some of that higher end editing. But during our live stream the other day, a lot of folks were surprised it can actually do a pretty decent job running games. What you're looking at here is Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 1080p at the lowest settings. And there we were getting between 25 and 30 frames per second running this very demanding AAA title. And that's due to the fact that these Ryzen processors have really powerful graphics on board for the size of the chip. But again, a computer equipped with a GPU will do a lot better. And this is an area too where if you are looking for the best gaming experience at the lowest price, something like an Xbox Series S will probably deliver a better gaming experience. We also ran Doom Eternal. Uh, this was run also at 1080p at the lowest settings. And here we were getting frame rates around 45 frames per second, give or take, depending on what was going on on screen at the time. So it did very well with this game. And if you run these games at 720p, you'll do even better with low settings. And we also ran one of my favorite games here, No Man's Sky. 
And this one we ran at 1080p at its standard settings, which is basically the low settings. This game has a lot of frame rate variation because it's all procedurally generated, but on the planet here, we were getting about 30 frames per second or so, and then when we went into space, we were in the 30 to 35 frames per second territory. So altogether, at 1080p, most games are quite playable, but they will play better on something like an Xbox or a PlayStation for less money. Now, one thing that is not as easy to do on a game console is game emulation. Uh, we booted up the PlayStation 2 emulator PCSX2, and we were running with Ace Combat 5 in this uh, screen grab. And as you can see, it's running at the full frame rate uh, without any hiccups at all. And I think the uh, GameCube and other consoles from around that era will also emulate quite well on this platform. And this is something you might want to consider a mini PC like this for. And I think for doing these kinds of emulated tasks, it will do quite well. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,375. And this puts this on the upper end of what we've seen out of similar Ryzen processors. And again, that's due to the fact that it's not power or thermally constrained like it might be in a laptop form. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a passing grade of 99.7%, which means that it is very unlikely that you'll see any kind of throttling of this machine when it's placed under heavy sustained load. So even though that fan can be quite annoying at times, it does keep this machine cooled to the point where it will perform consistently even under heavy workloads. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up the latest version of Ubuntu that was available at the time of this recording, and everything worked except the Wi-Fi. So we got audio, we got the Ethernet, we got Bluetooth, and display working at 4K, but the Wi-Fi was not detected. It is running with a newer Wi-Fi card, a RZ608, which apparently is a joint venture between MediaTek and AMD. So I'm guessing there's probably a driver out there that can be installed at a later time, but right now it wasn't working. But that card is on an M.2 slot, so you could pull it out and put in an Intel Wi-Fi card if you wanted to for better compatibility. And I think one of the probably good uses for something like this machine is as a little server, because you've got eight cores and a ton of RAM, you could do a lot of fun stuff experimenting with different types of server applications on the Linux side, maybe even running a bunch of Docker containers or something along those lines. And because you can install two hard drives on this, you could have one hard drive booting to Windows and another booting up to Linux. So overall, I found this to be a very nicely performing mini PC. I wish they offered it with some configurations that could lower its price down a bit to make it more accessible. I don't know if everyone needs 32 gigabytes of RAM in a mini PC like this. I think for a lot of use cases, eight or 16 might be enough. So hopefully they can offer some additional configurations, maybe even a bare bones one. But if you are looking for something that performs well in a small package, this is definitely something worth considering. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.